Today, I want to share with you the method I use when I go out exploring to kind of balance out both getting some distance done, where do I go, what do I do, and how do I find valuable stuff to scan. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try it out using some of the free pre-made shots, or you can also make your own custom shots and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more room for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports Star Citizen, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free, and use offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back out into the black in Elite Dangerous. We're here on my exploration alt and today is going to be all about exploration and be like a more general exploration guide where we talk about what I do and why I do what I do. But I just want to say that exploration is a very subjective thing. So I've made some choices and you may agree or disagree with those choices, but at least I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it so you can make your exploration trip and as enjoyable uh, experience as possible. And we're going to start out here in the galaxy map. See, for me, um, I need a destination. Now, I know not everybody does. Some people are fine with just flying out into nowhere, but personally, I, I need a destination. So what I will do is I would maybe go around and look at cool things people have found um, that I maybe want to visit. It could be a cool planet. It could be a cool nebula. Um, right now, we're heading out towards the Dire Awesomes. Could be a, a cloud, uh, like a nebula you want to visit, maybe Sac A, Beagle Point out there. Whatever it is, for me, I find it um, I find it nice to have a destination because that means that even if I do not find anything interesting in the systems, I always know that even if I just if I'm not finding anything, I know that at least I am progressing towards a target where there is something cool at the end. But let's start by talking about my uh, my settings here on uh, on the map. What I would usually do is I would put it into uh, into map mode. I would go here into star class and depending on what you want to do if you're looking for like non-secrets like black holes neutron stars root red stars then you can keep those on but what i would often do is i would take everything up um and to and including l so from carbon stars up to l so i only have um o to m stars as well as the wolf red, the wife dwarf, and the non sequence stars. And I want to make sure this set is applied to filter. The reason why I do that is all these stars are scoopable. These stars down here are interesting. So that's why I keep these stars only and I apply that to my filter. So when I plot a route, I'm only going to go through those systems. If you are more tailored towards you want to like go and find uh, earth lights and water worlds, you will often find those around G and F type stars. So what you could do is you could take a remove those and just try to focus around the gf type stars if you are looking for earth likes water worlds those kind of things then you should have a an easier time locating those kind of plans we're going to talk more about that here in uh, in a second but for me for just normal general exploration i would usually go and take all the stars as well as these three down here so just want to take you through a few jumps here so i can like walk you through the process that, that i'm doing i'm usually trying to avoid using uh, neutron stars i have that disabled so that it, they don't try to use neutron boosts simply because i'm more of a I, uh, as, as i said destination is just there to make sure i have something to go towards i don't necessarily um it, it need to get there fast so i'm more interested in locating cool systems or good looking planets or finding something interesting that i can get my name on uh, so for me, it's it's more the journey than the actual destination. But we arrived in a brand new system here, and the first thing, of course, we're going to do is we're going to use our um, discovery scanner. Go ahead and honk the system. I keep an eye on the number of planets it discovers. In this case, it says eight. You will often, if it only has like one or two, if it only has one, then you know it's only the star that you're right next to. You don't even need to uh, to do anything further. If there is anything to scan, what I will do is I will just quickly open up my FSS scanner. And we're actually pretty lucky here, it seems. So what you can see here is I have my FSS scanner. We have a number of targets here. Now look at the lower right-hand corner. You can see as this changes here, you can see here, for instance, we have metal-rich bodies in this area. Then we go up to rocky ice worlds. So we know that these are ice worlds. These are the ones that are right here. Move on to these over here. We can see those are probably rocky ice worlds. So in this case, um, we have some ice planets, we have some rocky ice planets, nothing too interesting. What I'm looking for is stuff here, as you can see, earth-likes, ammonia worlds, water worlds. So I'm looking at like the 
the end of spectral, the AL in spectral, and the first half of analysis. That's kind of the area that I'm looking for signals in. There is also, if you find anything down in this area here, that can, can, we have our asteroid belts here, but down in this area here, there can be stuff in like the Grang's couch. So keep an eye on, on the stuff in the lower end of the spectrum as well. But mostly, I look around this area here where, because that's where interesting stuff uh, often is, at least the stuff that I find interesting. So in this case, there weren't any of the planets that we're looking for. So without even doing anything further, I'm just gonna move on and I'm gonna jump into the next system. So once again, we go into the system. We go, we look at the system. There is something there that's probably a gas giant. It's a little tricky one, but it's right on the edge there, but I'm pretty sure that is a gas giant. And that one down there is an ice body. So again, none of the things we're looking for. So we are just gonna scoop a bit of fuel and then move on to the next system. Okay, here we go. A few systems down the line. Look at this one right here. That is a water world. You can see I'm right in the middle of the signal. We have the signal analysis in the corner that says water world. So what I will do now is not scan the system, actually. I'll close down the FSS scanner. I'm going to get some distance. Actually, let me show you why. Because if I were to scan now, um, you can see here how much of my field of view is taking up. And you can see there's even planets that are now covered up by the star. And I can't scan them if there's a star in the way. So I need to get some distance to the star before I begin my scan. Also, if you're playing with HOTAS, a really cool thing is you can see here right now I'm moving it around with my HOTAS and it's really slow. You can also set it to mouse movements so you can move around a lot quicker and you can be a lot more accurate. Um, so I recommend that you have both of the setup, but usually I would use my mouse when I'm doing FSS scanning. But first things first, we're going to go out of the FSS scanner, we're going to put the star behind us and we're going to get some distance so it doesn't take up as much of our field. And in case you're wondering how you set up the FSS scanner for mouse movement, you go into options, you go into controls, you go into ship controls, you scroll down here to full spectrum system scanner, like so. And then you go down and found the mouse movement, here we go. Mouse X axis is set to yaw, mouse Y axis is set to pitch, in my case inverted. And you're going to set the mouse sensitivity down here and even dead zones if you want that. But all those mouse settings are down here at the bottom of the uh, FSS setting in the ship controls. Once we've got some distance to the star, we're just going to start scanning, find ourselves a signal and just begin tuning in the, uh, the FSS scanner and just slowly begin to map everything. I'm going to map the whole system. Um, now this is a gas giant which we know is going to be not landable, but there's a few things to look, look out for when you are scanning. Which is now we're looking here on an ice body. There are two things I'll be looking at when I'm scanning a planet here. First is the features box up there. Keep in mind, if you if anything shows up there, there could be that there's something interesting. And um, the next thing is the on the list below, there's, there's a line, the first line at the top there says locations, none. There you can see stuff like if there's anything anything special on the planet. The features is more like geological sites, um, plant life, if you have Odyssey, those kind of things are shown up there and more like unusual things are shown down in uh, in the location site. So keep an, keep an eye on those two fields uh, as you are scanning and, uh, and mapping the planets. Here's another little trick when you're looking for signals. Once you find your first planet, you can, you can see the orbit line. Follow those orbit lines around because systems have a tendency to spawn as a plane and that means that all the planets should lie if not on, then at least very close to the same orbit line. You can see how they're all like really, really close to each other. These are actually very spread out, so there could be some interesting stuff in this system. Maybe it's just because we are... Okay, it's just because we flew out of the system. Okay, system has now been fully scanned. And we can now go ahead and figure out which planets and systems we want to go and visit. So what I would do is I would often go and just first open up the usual map here. And... First of all, we want to locate that water world that we actually stopped for. It is right here, 474 light seconds out. So that's definitely going to be a target I want to go and uh, and map. But what I'm also looking for is, is I would just go through these, because we have all these high metal content planets. You often find those in close to the star. And you can see there's a blank line here. I'm keeping an eye on that blank line, because if that say, sometimes it will say that this planet is a candidate for terraforming. So there were none in this system, but it could be that this line here would say that this planet is a candidate for terraforming. If you get a high metal content planet that is a candidate for terraforming, go and scan it because those planets are super valuable. You get a lot of cash out of those planets if you're looking for money. So in the system, I wouldn't stop and scan every plant, every system with high metal contents. 
But if I stop in a system for something like a water world, I would look and see if there's any terraformable high metal content, and then I would go and uh, and scan those. Other things that are often interesting could be, for instance, here you can see we have this bar that goes up like this. This means these two planets are orbiting each other. We have the same thing with the moons here. So that could be a good photo opportunity there, maybe. We can also see there are uh, um, that they are landable. We have an atmospheric landable planet here as well. So we can just check what type of atmosphere we're dealing with here. It seems to be mostly a carbon dioxide atmosphere. So that could be an interesting target as well to, to go and take a look at. But for the, just to check these planets before I actually go there, what I like to do is I'd like to open up the uh, Aurora map here, like so, and then check out planet one and two here just to see kind of have a feeling for how close they are. So they're actually pretty close to each other. We can see the star there as well. We can kind of get a, a, a wireframe view of what kind of, of, of shot we're going to get. So for a photo opportunity, these two here could be a really good um, good opportunity. So I might actually want to go there. There were also something around one of the gas giants. And again, if we look at these two moons here and the gas giant, that could be some interesting stuff there too in, in case of a, of a photo op. So now that I am in this system, my plan would be to start by going out to these two small planets. Then I want to head out, just take a look at the at the landable planet here with an atmosphere. Just maybe there could be some uh, some cool shots there. Then of course go out and map that planet there. And just go and take a look at these two moons here and see if we can get some, uh, some cool shots. So let's go ahead and start with the, with the two inner planets. That's actually pretty cool. Um, of course, if we look at them from the opposite side, we can kind of get the silhouette of the two planets against the star. That might be a, that might be a cool shot too. But having these two planets so close to each other is actually giving a that's a pretty cool shot. Not the best I take I take it, but I like it. I'm just gonna go and look at them from the dark side as well. Look at that. That is pretty cool. I think that's a pretty nice shot. I actually really like that. Nice, okay, so that was a pretty cool photo opportunity there. And here we have the atmospheric planet that I wanted to take a look at as well. Now, of course, for people with Odyssey, you can go down and take a look through the atmosphere and uh, there could be some, uh, some cool shots of that. But even for people without Odyssey, what you can do is get in and see if you get the star to shine in through the atmosphere, which often can give some, um, some pretty cool shots too. Let's see if we can get in a little closer here and we can lock the camera to our ship and we can can fly over the planet and we can kind of get a recording of a of a sunrise here over over the planet a bit of a fake sunrise since it's moving but you get the point you get some pretty cool shots play around with the light through the atmosphere i think that's uh, i think that's pretty cool and here we have the water world which was the planet i wanted to uh, to scan it's not going to be a a mapping guide but uh basically just gonna go and uh, and fire off some probes. The only little tip I want to give now is, because I see a lot of people who for some reason don't know this, you can loop probes around the, the back, like that marker there is the horizon, so everything out here is gonna hit the back of it, so I can fire like that and it should hit the back side of the planet. You can kind of curve the uh, um, curve the probes around to uh, to the back side, so you don't have to, uh, to move around the planet every time you need to, uh, to map it. You can map it from just one position. Gotta go a little closer. Is that a cloud or a very, very lonely island? Like that little elongated piece of whatever that is right there. That could be a cloud, maybe. But that's, that's this over here, then. That looks like land for sure. Yeah, those would be tiny, tiny islands in the middle of a huge ocean. I mean, there's a water planet after all, but imagine living there. Oh, that's a rather stunning looking planet, isn't it? Now, I just want to show you a little trick here. Because often if you come in and you want to, to map a planet, I could begin my mapping, I could see I could fire up my probes here. And I could even actually hit the hit the uh, the horizon right there and there. But look at this. If I want to hit that horizon there, I'm going to hit the ring and my probe is not going to actually hit the planet. And the same thing if I try to shoot anything around the dark side of the planet, the back side of the planet in my case. I'm going to hit the ring or I'll have to try and see if I can can loop around, um, loop around the range, which I can't in this, uh, in this situation here. So to avoid that, what you can do is move down. So you're looking at the rings edge on here. You do it like that, stop it right there. So you are edge on to, uh, to the rings. And now when you go in, you can see here, 
that now I can loop my shots around as I see fit and I'm not going to hit the rings because the rings are just a tiny, tiny line across the planet and now it is just like mapping any other planet makes it a lot easier to do. And the final place I uh, I wanted to take a look at was those two ice moon and the uh, and the gas giant in the, in the background. And that is also a very very pretty sight with those two close orbiting uh, snowballs there and the and the gas giant in the background. So also a very nice photo opportunity there. Now the final thing I want to share with you is that now that we've been in the system, we've been targeting a lot of different things. Obviously, we don't want to go in and have to replot our route every time. So you can go in here and you can go into, I believe it is shift controls and then targeting. And in here, you have here, target next system and route. Bound that to something. I don't believe it's bound by default. So go in and bind that to something. Target next system and route. Because that means, I'm going to show you what you can do with this. That means that you can now, as I have, I think I have one of the moons targeted. Yeah, we see I have one of the moons targeted. I can go ahead and just target the next system in route. Click that button. And now it automatically targeted that system that I was uh, already plotted into my route. And I can now go ahead, charge up my frame shift drive, and move on and be on my way on my next system. As we count down for the jump, that is going to be it. I really hope you found some useful tricks here. If you're going to set out into the black, hopefully it's going to make your journey to wherever you want to go a little bit more interesting and uh, exciting. Thanks a lot for watching, and also next time, I will see you guys in space.